thank you very much for having me online. And uh, I want to talk about uh, civic tech and journalism, uh, impactful collaboration. And I've chosen this image from the city of Aarhus, which shows uh, basically two generations of society. One is an industrial society on the right, which is a harbor front. And the other one is a globe, which is called a dome of visions. And that is trying out new forms of collaboration for a sustainable society. I'm a journalism scholar, so I come with a background of asking what kinds of public communication uh, do we actually want to enable in a future sustainable society. And I have uh, worked together with uh, this research group uh, for an extended period of time. So that is Yuya Shibuya from the University of Tokyo and Andrea Hamm uh, from the Weizenbaum Institute for Network Society in Berlin. And we are a loose research group uh, interested in civic tech, and I will spend a word on where we, how we ended up at looking at civic tech, because we actually come from quite different backgrounds. Um, Yuya is specialized in data science and citizen participation, whereas Andrea has worked uh, both in journalism studies, but is now focusing a lot on public sector sustainability and digitization and focusing on how to get citizens involved. And as I said, my background is in journalism studies, and I'm increasingly interested in civic communication practice. So what does the communication of a sustainable society actually look like? And it, for me, it's very unlikely that it, it will work with models of journalism that have worked for the industrial age. So that's how we ended up having an interest in civic tech uh, as a bridging technology, but also community form of organization. And we have actually uh, published a lot on that, uh, hosting a workshop last year, for example, on what does failure mean in civic tech? When is a project actually considered a failure? Or what kinds of learnings do we actually take from civic tech projects? And one thing that came out of this workshop is that actually the runtime of projects often puts an impediment to the successes, although there were multiple learnings, community engagement, outputs, etc. And that is what brings up the role of journalism for me are there new ways in which we can think about a journalism in which civic tech actually has a role? So that is what I would like to present with a few examples from my research group. Um, uh, and here are some ways in which we are thinking about this. Uh, one study that uh, Yuya did actually in Japan right after the Fukushima disaster was a study on safe casts, so uh, a bottom-up initiative on measuring radiation when it was publicly not available. And we have here uh, an example of how these small sensors that they just deployed uh, have contributed to a growing data set on radiation all over, the, all over Japan. Now, the dimension of this storyline, I would say, is that, of course, it's a great asset to have more and more data points about uh, from citizens. But I think the more important dimension is uh, something like volunteer storytelling. And I could see that also in some of the previous presentations, it's like the story of someone getting engaged with an issue. Because what engages me in this line of research is the data that speaks about issues and how it can be made useful for journalistic enterprises. So this kind of personalized storytelling of inserting yourself into addressing an issue is just as important for me as the data itself. In another example, uh, we looked at uh, bike counters uh, across different US cities, um, which is a measure to you know, see how many people are using bikes in public spaces. And these, measure, these measuring points actually draw a lot of communication from people on social media. So here we have tweets and Facebook posts. And uh, always when there is a new kind of post, people get engaged in a public discussion about the value of cycling in public space, of not using the car, et cetera. So there are stories about change, stories about sustainability out there that can be supported by storytelling formats but also journalistic formats. And out of these researches Andrea and uh, Yuya have done, they have developed kind of a growth model of civic tech initiatives, uh, how they develop over time and what makes them either succeed or transform into a different kind of uh, assembly with other alliances. And they have quite clearly mapped out in the case of the German uh, sensor community and a safecast community that there are like three distinct phases of emergence, growth, and sustaining. And of course, the sustaining phase is always the most difficult one 
not only because volunteer support drops out, but also because funding may evaporate or the issue may not simply be as important anymore. And I'm wondering, as a researcher in journalism, are there new roles for journalism in enabling this kind of sustaining debate? I would like to bring one example that I find very useful for this uh, question. So impact through journalism, beyond the data collection itself, beyond the community engagement, beyond the building of interfaces, uh, can actually profit from an involvement in, with journalism. If you think about a project like this one, I think it has been widely cited, a project in Berlin that see, sought to measure the overtaking distance uh, of cyclists by uh, vehicle uh, uh, owners. And that one had multiple com dimensions because it equipped bikes, first of all, with a type of sensor. Then it also built maps of streets that were actually quite narrow for cyclists to navigate. And it pinpointed specific areas in the town where a lot of the measurements were actually quite dangerous for cyclists. So this type of data-driven journalism uh, bridges between civic tech policy initiatives and journalism itself. So it was facilitated by the Tagesspiegel newspaper in Berlin. It was the motivation to create a data set for an often intangible, uh, not visible uh, threat to cyclists. And it was implemented on several levels. So it was a journalistic story, but it was also around uh, creating a sensor device and making people actually able to use that as well as creating a community of volunteers. So it had many levels that were facilitated through the engagement of the newspaper. In the end, they succeeded in having a 100 volunteer that over two months collected data on this intangible threat uh, with some scientific support. And they managed to create an interactive web application that to the crowd of this conference is nothing new, a data map. And they also created a lot of media articles that covered the issue but also cover their own intervention along with some in public talks. So what the impact of this is, is not just the involvement of civic tech communities or newspaper communities, but it was the impact that it became a visible uh, phenomenon that was otherwise invisible. Uh, it led to a change in the German traffic regulation so that the 1.1 1 .1 meter 50 rule of overtaking a bicycle was actually uh, written down. It also led to a legal reuse of the data that had been collected through this project and supported the pop-up bicycle lanes uh, that were installed during the COVID-19 pandemic because many more people didn't want to go on public transport and chose to use the bicycle. And I would like to emphasize it's not just the data or the community involvement, but it was a moment in which certain policies that were already in place in the city of Berlin coalesced with this heightened public attention to the issue itself. And it actually drew some quite controversial uh, debates because as you know, Germans are very fond of their uh, cars and their, especially the car infrastructure. So I wouldn't say data and community engagement is everything or journalistic coverage is everything, but it can all work together. And that is what I would like to underline in this focus on collaboration. Uh, Andrea did a research on this uh, project actually, and she tried to find out that in such a data-driven journalism project, there are actually different phases uh, and new qualifications that journalists need. And I think that is the main impediment, main obstacle to making uh, journalists work a lot more with civic tech because they need to both be able to engage in data work, but they also need to be able to do the project management to get the right partners together and what is even more critical is to kind of track the impact of their own reporting or their own work, which is typically not uh, on the top of the news agenda. So that is kind of a professional role, but also what is a news value in this kind of uh, context can be quite challenging. But I would like to emphasize that I think from a journalism perspective, new data-driven community reporting tools, either through sensors, such as this sense box that we have now widely available, or through different kinds of engagement toolkits that are out there that all kind of address citizens as stakeholders, offer a new way of facilitating collaboration around issues by generating data together. So I've tried to summarize that a little bit in a data-driven community reporting uh, summary here. 
which is that the adoption of sensors leads to some kind of skill development and discourse about like how to measure certain phenomena and how certain phenomena are not measurable. Uh, it leads, of course, to the creation of new public data assets that can be used by multiple stakeholders, citizens, public policy makers, but also planners and other activists. It also creates sustained attention for certain community issues, uh, not just in environmental monitoring, but in this case, as I uh, tried to explain, it also contributed to branding a journalistic medium with a particular engagement on an issue. So the issue is created on many levels through the citizen engagement, through the interfaces that are made through the data and through the implications that can be drawn for the policy impact. So in a way, I'm arguing for journalists becoming designers of interfaces that allow public engagement. And I have just a different example here, uh, which is like calculate the imprint of your meal, uh, which is a, for me an instance of like, oh, this is what my meal costs in terms of CO2 emissions. I think such personalized interfaces about how is my role in a given uh, context or in, in relation to a given issue is uh, what, what can be done outside or together with activist contexts where it is an engagement tool for journalism to uh, kind of prepare awareness, but also to prepare stories around that. So what this brings up for me is the question of impact pathways when I'm as a researcher, of course, uh, not necessarily always involved in building things, but at looking at things and, and getting and get engaged with people. And I think there is a new way in which journalists, activists, civic activists and, and researchers can contribute to what is called uh, research uh, impact pathways. This is an example of a study in which uh, social science and humanities scholars are were analyzed, like how does their research actually impact society? And typically you would say, well, they write their papers, they write their uh, books, and then they write their, their uh, conference presentations and that's all they do. But there are actually many complex ways in which you can engage with stakeholders as part of your research in which you can bring up ideas, in which you can network different actors around given issues. Uh, and that is, I think, for me as a teacher, also important to bring to the front for students. If I look into what this data journalism currently being researched on, uh, I have to say that that kind of impact dimension, both the data journalism, but also the research on data journalism is a blank spot. Uh, we have done an, an extensive review of data journalism research at the moment, about 150 articles from the last five years, and we find a dominant uh, focus on project design, team setup, story angle, and the media design. So what are data journalists basically producing? What we don't find is uh, any impact assessment, like what does the data journalistic story actually do in society? And we find even less information about how different stakeholders have contributed to data journalism or have profited from data journalism. And I think that is an invitation to the civic tech community to always think about that angle. And I know there are many collaborations that actually work together with journalists, but I think that specific journalistic interests in a data set or a data driven project uh, can really create a different type of impact. And I would also like to mention what does an audience do with a data or a science journalistic project that is even harder to research and unless you go into uh, social media mining and so on. So in the last instance, I would say we need kind of a, a, a new collaboration between the civic tech community and the data or journalism community because we are increasingly in a public opinion, uh, yeah, in a, in a talk about public opinion or conflicts of public opinion where data is you know, brought up by all sides in an oft very often highly conflictual manner. And I think the complementarity here is that data journalism can provide both data and a storytelling of change phenomena in society, whereas civic tech activist contexts typically engage citizens across different phases of change, including the impact of a given project. So what I argue for in my research and also what we argue for as a group is that in some way we need to redesign journalism to accommodate such new challenges to public opinion, but also to accommodate new possibilities that are enabled by civic tech. 
So data journalism, in my opinion, is not just about data, but it is actually about what all of you have demonstrated so nicely already about making data actionable for different publics. And that is a core competence, I would say, that lies a bit outside of civic tech proper or the building of specific issue platforms, but it is actually a view towards public interest uh, in, from a journalistic perspective. Then I think what data journalism can support is actually data exploration and collective insight. So that kind of personalization of experience and a way of storytelling in which sustainability transitions become understandable to the individual um, than how they affect them, whether it is about energy use or climate uh, effects or mobility or other sustainability factors. So what I think is the benefit of data journalism building interfaces for such collections is that you can enable a sustained engagement with issues over a longer time that escapes in a certain way the news cycle that is often informing journalistic reporting. To close my presentation, I would just briefly mention a project that we are, I'm about to finish. Uh, it's called the InfraPublics project, which was a, like a pilot study in trying to bring in three, bring together three different fields of sustainability transitions. So that is on the one hand, the field of civic tech, uh, uh, the field of data journalism and smart cities as a spe specific uh, form of civic innovation. So in which new ways of uh, communicating about society are uh, exercised. And what we have created is simply a project base that I hope more people can contribute to on the overlapping interests uh, between civ smart cities, civic tech and data journalism. Uh, we also have a section that is bringing people involved in these initiatives together and letting them speak about what is the specific role of infrastructure in uh, negotiating uh, social equity. And as a third dimension, I have a thought about infrapublics lessons. So how to bring these real world examples into the classroom and educate future journalists about the possibilities of using both civic tech approaches, civic engagement, but also data driven collections to create this sustained engagement uh, over time. Um, and that is my contribution to this uh, panel. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Uh, Thank and I hope that our team will be able to join next year in person. Thank you very much.